Hello everybody, thank you for clicking on my video. My name is Asitos Nicolitos and I may look a little bit yellow but that's because I'm recording this at night and I'm poor. I don't have one of those ring lights so it doesn't matter because the MCAT doesn't care what color your lights are. It cares what you use to study for it and what you know, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Today I want to talk about the resources that I used when I was studying for the MCAT and the timeline and how the resources fit into my timeline, right? I'm not gonna go in depth about the different materials that I use and reviewing them because that's gonna be a later video. I'll keep y'all posted on that, but if you have questions, you can reach out to me or comment down below and I'll answer your questions. Great, so let's get started. So before I actually started my MCAT prep, before I even had MCAT studying on my mind, I ordered the Kaplan book bundle, right? So this was probably during my first year of my two-year post back program. I ordered this bundle and I let it collect dust in my room until I was ready to open it. And I decided that I was going to open it in December and then sit for an MCAT exam in January. Does that sound a little fishy to anybody? Cause I don't know, I thought it sounded good, but no. Anybody who's taken this test, anybody who is already studying for this test, you know that one month of studying ain't going cut it. So yeah, I quickly realized that as soon as I opened up one of these books and I ended up pushing my test date to March, a little bit more reasonable, right? So for anyone who's unfamiliar with Kaplan, they have a bunch of these little books here. Little, not so little, right? Um, but they've got Gen Chem, they've got the Gen Chem book, they've got the bio book, biochem, it's like social, physics, um, cars book, they've got all these books, right? So I spent from December until March working my way through the biology book, the biochem book, the psych social, and the Gen Chem book. I actually never went through the physics or the organic chemistry book. So that's what I did until March. And even though I was feeling good because I was going through my little books, I wasn't ready. I wasn't admitting it to myself, but because the thing is that nobody ever feels ready to take the MCAT. It's one of those things um, that that you keep studying, you keep studying, but you're never actually going to feel good and ready when you go in there. But when I tell you that I wasn't ready come March, I mean that I didn't hit the bare minimum content that I should have hit before sitting for that exam. So that's what I meant. But you know what happened in March? See, if you're in New York, you know exactly what happened in March. COVID. It canceled my March test date and I immediately scrambled for an April test date. And then I kept studying and then April came around and it canceled the April test date. And I was like, okay, let's go for the end of April. And I kept studying and then the end of April came and the double AMC, the people who actually scheduled the exams and are responsible for the MCAT, they said, sorry folks. The MCAT will be canceled until further notice due to COVID. But we persevered. We kept we kept studying through these books lightly because I wasn't sure if I was gonna actually take the exam. I kept studying through these books and alongside these books, I was using good old Khan Academy, right? Um, what I would do was I would actually watch the Khan Academy videos before I read the chapter, the corresponding chapter in these books. And that helped me to make it feel like I wasn't reading alien language because although the information was relatively fresh because I did a post back program, there's still so many details that you think you're going to remember, but then once they're right in front of you in the book, it's just kind of like, oof, I wish I did. Um, yeah, so I kept going with Khan Academy Kaplan books, and I also signed myself up for Kaplan's question of the day where I had a question, a discrete MCAT question sent to my email every day. And I did that in the morning and it forced me to just get into MCAT mode. So that's what I spent most of December until May doing. But then once May came around, the AMC sent us an email saying, you can now register for the MCAT once again. Yay. So I immediately got on my computer. I ended up getting a test date for August and this was rough, but I, under, I understood that with such a late test date, I needed to really invest 
in my MCAT prep because it was either invest in studying for the MCAT or have to invest in another application cycle if I didn't get into any schools in this cycle because of a low test score. I wouldn't have the opportunity. With a late test date, you don't have the opportunity to retake if something goes wrong. So that's what I did. And when I mean invest, I mean I went to my younger sister and I asked her if she could lend me some of her money from her little cruise ship job and I also took out a loan. Yeah, because like I said, I don't even have money for a ring light. So a $3,000 MCAT course. was rough, right? But I decided that I was gonna do that rather than spend two to $4,000 in another application cycle altogether. I knew that there were, the programs out there were Kaplan, Princeton, yeah, I think that's all I really heard of, right? Kaplan and Princeton and, and a few others, right? But it wasn't until I heard on the pre-med podcast by Dr. Gray, and if you aren't watching that, you should. I'm not watching, it's a podcast. If you're not listening to that, you should. Um, but they talked a lot about this test prep company that was called Blueprint. This is not one that I've heard about through friends and I couldn't really find many reviews on it because they used to be known as Next Step and now they're known as Blueprint. So I went online and I was able to find that they offered one-on-one -on -one tutoring, 16 hours of one-on-one -on -one tutoring, modules, different um, video modules, books, and 10 practice exams as well as all of the AAMC materials that you need to take, that you need to practice with. So I was like, okay, I mean, this is the cheapest. It offers one-on-one -on -one individualized attention, which is what I'm looking for at this stage. And um, I think I'm gonna take a chance on this. That's what I said to myself, so I did. And just to show you a little bit of what the blueprint books look like, they look like this, right? This is for biology. They've got one for chemistry and organic chemistry. They've got one for psych social. They've got one for cars and you open them up. I mean, the writing is pretty dense and um, there's not, I mean, I guess there are a few pictures, but um, yeah, so this is basically what they look like. And I didn't use the books, but I mainly stuck to the modules, the office hours and the tutoring from May until August. About a month before I was um, scheduled to sit for my exam, I transferred over to the AAMC materials, which are actually part of my Blueprint subscription. And if there is anything that you need before you sit for your MCAT, it's going to be those AAMC materials. And everybody will tell you this. You are not ready to take that MCAT until you have worked through the AAMC materials, right? The AAMC, they have, I know they just changed this because they just updated, um, the resources that they provide to you but when I was taking the MCAT what they provided were three practice exams full practice exams that were previous MCAT exams before a sample exam that was never scored um, a Q bank a section bank where you find passage based practice and flashcards where you can find discrete question practice right so while Kaplan Princeton review exam crackers blueprint they're all great they're not the same Right? Every, every test prep company tries their best to emulate what you're going to find on the MCAT. But the people who can do it the best are the people who make the MCAT. So until you really go through those materials, you're not ready for the MCAT because that's the closest that you're going to get. And be careful when you use those materials because you don't want to use them too early. You want to use them later on in your test prep practice so that by the time you've gone through every all of your second party materials, you get to the AAMC materials and you get a better idea of where you stand come test day. I also use the Amino Acid Academy on my on my phone where I was able to practice my amino acids daily because you need to know your amino acids. The AAMC has two A's in their name because they're obsessed with amino acids. That is why, don't let anybody tell you different. But yeah, you need to know those amino acids like the back of your hand, right? So I use the Amino Acid Academy. And what I also used that was really helpful was a tablet that my boyfriend actually got for me as a birthday present. And this was a key factor in um, taking notes and staying organized while actually going through my MCAT prep, right? Because the thing about MCAT studying is that it's very fluid, right? You learn something in biochem one day and then you learn something in physics the next day and then you realize that they're related to each other because you've seen them both in one problem. So you gotta have a way to connect them and you gotta, you gotta either have a really good 
um, color-coded system in your notebook, um, a way of dragging and dropping things into different places. This is something that was really helpful when it came to MCAT prep. Because you might think that you finished taking notes on a topic and then bam, they hit you with some more information and you gotta all of a sudden expand on that chapter in your notes, right? I had a few buddies from my post back program, shout out to Sam, Brianna, and Becca, and Evie, right? And we would meet periodically to discuss concepts that we were confused about or that we couldn't really get our minds wrapped around, right? And the amazing thing about group study is that something that's your weakness is gonna be somebody else's strength and vice versa. And the best way to learn something is by teaching it, right? So that's another thing that I would suggest when you go through your MCAT studying. Don't just learn it so that you can spit it out on the exam. Make it a goal to learn it well enough that you can teach it, right? And that's going to activate a different part of your brain. You'll learn about that in your MCAT prep but that will activate a different part of your brain and will help it to stick better. Yeah. There you have it. Throughout my bumpy MCAT journey, I've used Kaplan, Khan Academy, Blueprint, Amino Acid Academy. I've used Kaplan, Questions of the Day, Jack Weston, Cars Passages of the Day, and Group Study, right? Remember to find what works for you because everybody's different and find out what type of learner you are, whether that's visual, whether that's tactile, whether you like auditory learning. Um, just find what works for you and really just run with it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you learned a little something. I will be making more detailed videos about the different resources that I use, so stay tuned for that. And if there's something that you would like to see more of, let me know, drop a comment down below. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me, message me, DM me on Instagram. I'm pretty open to questions. I don't bite.